Closest without going over? Right, never established formal okay. rules. 840. Cody. Tom, is this, is this the uh, intention to, for the permanent space? I mean, I actually like it. So is this the intention to leave this permanent back here? So the, this is our I'll keep it. I'll, 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 I'm going to put it on the easy. Uh, Meeting back into session. <coughs> we just finished with the workshop for the campus master plan, and we now go to item five on the agenda, which is the general public comments. Anyone wishing to address the <coughs> town council on any topic that's not on the agenda tonight, please approach the podium, name and address, and you have three minutes. Benjamin Howard for Oakdale Drive. Um, I had some friends up this weekend. I know you guys don't hear enough. It's some nice compliments over things that have happened in the town. Uh, they happen to come in from Boston in the Portsmouth area, and the drive in down Haggis Parkway, they were impressed with the rock gym, more than impressed with uh, the holy donut. Uh, no, they would not suggest the cheese-filled bacon donut. Uh, it sounds good, but it wasn't good. Um, and they also thought the skate park and Memorial Park were a couple more of their comments. So I, I think we've done a really good job. Um, so take the compliment as you will. Uh, these things are slow. We shouldn't rush into anything, but uh, there are people noticing um, the sort of vision that has been in place here. So uh, well done. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Larry Harwell, 9 Puritan Drive. Um, your first order of business was a, an executive session in regards to Michael Doyle. I understand that's confidential, uh, but it seems from what I've read in the press, one of two things are going to occur here. Either you make a decision to 
continue litigation or you drop it. I hope maybe that you can share that with the public at some point. Or do I have to wait to read it in the paper? Anyone else wishing to address the council on matters not on the agenda? Close public comment period. Uh, minutes of <coughs> April 18 and April 25. If I could make a point. Uh, if you would. The um, April 25th minutes are not done, so the 18th are we're we're distributed. Yes. Tody hasn't slept since that meeting, so she's so. <laughs> I'll, I'll accept the motion for approval of the April 18 minutes. So, so moved. Second. Uh, comments or corrections? Seeing none, all in favor. Thank you. Adjustments to the agenda. I don't believe there are any. Uh, the items to be signed this evening are the treasurer's warrants, which I'll do at the end of the evening. Uh, order 18-28 at the 7 p.m. public hearing on the proposed municipal school budgets for the fiscal year 2019. I'll ask the town manager to introduce this matter. We have no formal um, presentation plan for this evening. Um, I did leave at the, um, at the chair here at the door a copy of the one-page handout that was handed out at first reading. And at this point, the budget is still in um, still in review, and so there's no been no formal changes at this point. So as we sit here this evening, that's kind of where we're at. I do expect some further movement from the Finance Committee, uh, who has their final meeting scheduled for next Thursday, May 10, and that's the meeting where they will consolidate and coordinate their recommendations to the full council that will be considered at the uh, second reading on May 16. So um, I'm pleased to answer any questions, um, but I didn't have any presentation prepared. Peter Hayes is the chair of the Finance Committee, and uh, I don't know, I expected you probably had comments at uh, Councilor Comments on Finance, or are you, do you want to uh, reserve those for, uh, make them now, later, or reserve them for May 18th? <laughs> um, I think Todd kind of summarized. I mean, it's kind of a work in progress. We have, I was going to report out on sort of the, you know, later on in the evening, but we've had We've done work as a finance committee. We've also met as a joint finance committee with the school, and we've had conversations. We're still mindful of the goals that we had set, and we're working through that, but our intent is over, over the next week or so, we're going to have those conversations and come up with recommendations on, on where we go from here. Good. So the finance committee has meetings scheduled mm -hmm. to continue its work, uh, and we're still two weeks, two weeks away from uh, second reading. So with that introduction, anyone wishing to address the town council on the <clears throat> public hearing for the budget may approach the podium. Thank you. Good evening, Kelly Murphy, 5 Woodfield Drive. I just urge the council to accept the budget as presented by the school board and the superintendent. There is nothing extra in it. In fact, um, there have been reductions in a lot of areas and shifting of staff to make up for um, gaps where other districts would be able to fill it with dollars. Um, I just read an article that Cape Elizabeth and Brunswick High School, well, their school departments, um, were listed in the best in the state for music education. and. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> we not only um, could be adequate in our allied arts, and it's not for any fault of the teachers or for lack of will for the school board and the school department, but we just don't have the funding for it. Um, the inclusion this year of extra music at the middle school, and I believe there's an extra band being worked into the schedule at the high school, is all happening with reallocation. So we're, we're not close to the best. I would like adequate, and that goes for a lot of areas. So I urge you to accept the budget as presented with no further reductions. Thank you. Thank you. Others wishing to speak? Good evening, Benjamin Howard, 4 Oakdale Drive. Um, 
Today I had the pleasure of sitting down with the superintendent and the chair of the school board. I sort of got a lot of my questions answered in regards to the school budget. Um, it definitely seems that uh, many of the line items which I saw as potential places to save money and cut are uh, already tied up and based off of the contracts, off of previous contracts that we've already entered into. Um, the areas I specifically looked into were uh, places where the budget had increased over 5% over the year and was a monetary difference of 10, at least $10,000. Um, again, most of it was with contracted services where the money can't really be touched other than uh, <coughs> getting rid of employees. Um, it, there were some areas that I'm still trying to find answers for, but I think the school board has done a extremely good job at you know trying to find places in the budget where they can. Maybe there's a little one last push that could be made, uh, but um, it does seem that a lot of people are putting a lot of work into this this year, and uh, it's nice to see. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to address the council on the uh Town and school budget. I should point out that we received uh, a whole series of emails uh, that uh, supported the school budget, particularly, uh, and uh, urged the town council not to uh, initiate any further cuts from uh, uh, Jessica Humble, Elizabeth Chalmers. Uh, Jennifer Swalla, uh, Jennifer uh, Jubilis, and Michelle Grant. I won't read them, but they uh, all endorse the school's budget and the hard work that was put into preparing it and submitting it, uh, and strongly support it. Any other comments? Uh, late arrivals? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Not I've literally a, just come problem. from Bangor. My name is Stacy Newman. I live at 17 Windsor Pines Drive. I was going to write what I was going to say, but I'm late. So I am here to say that um, I don't like this budget. I think it is too trimmed down. I think there's a lot of things that need to be in this budget that aren't there. That being said, I know why the budget is what it is. And I think that you've done an excellent job, again, coming up with the budget. I am sorry I'm still out of breath. <laughs> One of the things that's missing from this budget is, for example, um, a new teacher for second grade in Blue Point School. My middle child is in first grade at Blue Point. He, um, was one of the people who was affected by that teacher getting pulled. That is a tough class. I can say that because my kid's one of the kids that makes it tough. He is an energetic seven-year-old, and that class is filled with them, 21 of them. His teacher is incredible, but she has to spend a lot of time working with the energy um, and, and first grade isn't the way it used to be. Um, he is really good at math. Doesn't get that from me, so I can say that. Um, and so she tried to pull some extra curriculum for him, and she couldn't do it because the curriculum that the first graders are working on, this program she had, she hadn't signed up for anything other than first grade, and it was third grade math that they were working on. So it's not like when we were, you know, in kindergarten, when we were in first grade. There's a lot of time on academics, and to have these huge classes, it affects it. It affects what they can do. I also feel really strongly about foreign language. I mean, from when we were putting, we were creating the written language, the studies have shown that little kids absorb languages easier. And we don't have it in our primary and elementary schools. And I heard that it's possible that could be cut at the middle and the high school. These are kids that we have to prepare for a global economy where almost every other country they can speak at least two languages. Again, I say all this because I think that we need to compromise as a town. And I am willing to put those things that I want aside, those things that directly affect my kid, 
for this town. We all know that right now our town is divided. And I don't think it's ever been more divided than it is right now with this recall vote. And so I am willing to support the budget, but I am hoping that all of you, every single one of your, you town councilors, because you are our leaders for this town, will say that you support the vote, that you, the budget, that you will vote for the budget and ask everyone in this town to vote yes on this budget. We do not need another divisive school budget summer in addition to what is going on. I do not think our town can recover from it. So I come here and compromise. As always, I want to thank you for your service and you to the school board. And I hope that um, everybody will support this budget the first time. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to address the <coughs> town or school budget? Close the public hearing. Uh, we are not going to, this is the public hearing and it really isn't intended to be a, a point of discussion for the town council. Uh, town council members may make remarks and councilor comments at the end and the meeting is not going to take very, so very long. So uh, if you wish to stick around for that, uh, that would be great. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Uh, Order 1834, seven of the hearing uh, and action on the new request for a food handler's license from Morgan uh, Schaefer, DBA e and M Higgins Beach Market, located at 82 Spurwink Road. Tom Clerk will. All um, the applications are in order. They've worked with codes and planning on, their, on obtaining their occupancy permit. And uh, as soon as that's issued, they will, if this is approved tonight, they will go ahead and issue their license. Great, I saw activity around there. Uh, yesterday and today, some vehicles in and out. Uh, public comment on uh, the order. Close public comment. I'll take a motion. So moved. Second. Comments? Discussion? Okay. Just want to wish the new owners the best of luck. We're happy to see the market go forward again. I know everyone enjoys being able to walk up from the beach and grab a sandwich and ice cream, and so I'm glad to see it's going to maintain that use. Uh, the uh, realtor lives just down the street from me who sold, told me that they're nice older couple experience with retail and moving to the area to be nearer family, uh, children, grandchildren. So it sounds like a, a, a nice match. Uh, have we had a motion? Yeah. 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 All, all in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Uh, uh, resolution 1801, act on the request to reclaim the month of May as Building Safety Month, and I'll ask the town manager. Yes, uh, Brian Longstaff, our zoning administrator, put this matter forward, and I'm pleased the council will permit it on its agenda. And if you'll bear with me, I'll just uh, read a couple of sentences that Brian put together. Uh, Building Safety Month is a public awareness campaign celebrated by jurisdictions worldwide during the month of May for the past 38 years to help individuals, families, and businesses understand what it takes to create safe and sustainable structures. This campaign reinforces the need for adoption of modern, regularly updated building codes and a strong, efficient system of code enforcement and a well-trained professional workforce to maintain that system. Each week of May, we'll focus on, uh, one, focus on and celebrate one of the aspects of building safety and how we benefit in our lives and in our communities where we live, work, and play. So. Uh, Thank you for taking the time on the agenda and just to recognize uh, one of the kind of unsung things that we do at the local level to make sure that uh, our structures are safe and, um, and good for us to use and um, appreciate your attention. Uh, public comment. Anyone wishing to address this matter, please approach the podium. And accept the motion. So moved. Second. Comment. Seeing none, all in favor. Opposed? Thank you. Well, old business, none at this time. New business, uh, act on the request, uh, this is order 1835, act on the request to set the date, time, and location of the school budget validation referendum for Tuesday, June 12, 2018 at 7 a.m. at the Scarborough High School located at 11 Municipal Drive. And I'll ask the town clerk to address this. This is a normal procedure that we take in order to announce the election um, being held on June 12th. Very good. Public comment on the matter. 
Seeing none, I'll accept the motion. So moved. So, <laughs> second. Comment. Uh, nothing. Levi. Yeah, nothing really to do with the date. The date's the date. Uh, the question I do have is that um, I'm, I'm assuming that this obviously would be a school day, and last year there were some concerns expressed around um, traffic within the parking lot and how that kind of flow happened, and some concern and caution. Uh, are we doing anything differently this year uh, yes. with the school department to make be. sure? Okay. We'll, we'll have fire police out in out in the parking area, making sure that there's uh, no incidents. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Further comment? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, non action items, none. Uh, standing special committee reports and liaison reports. Let's uh, start down with Council Kaiser. So, uh, all of my liaison committees met last week, and I was out of town last week, so I have nothing to report. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Very. Very effective. That's, that's the shortest sentence I've heard from you. <laughs> Councilor <laughs> Hayes. Yeah, nothing actually in the report. I kind of reported on earlier on the, the meetings of the finance committees and working on the budget and sharing ideas and trying to get to where we need to be. So I think I'm good. Very good. Councilor Katerina. Um, ordinance, nothing really. We're discussing a couple of matters. We are moving something over to Peter. <laughs> the moorings I issue um, and the harbor, uh, whatever that committee's called. Um, thank you. Um, the communications committee, I'm sorry I have to cancel it for next week. I have another commitment I have to be at, but I'll be talking to my committee members just about um, a couple of changes we had made. And then uh, I did attend Greater Portland Council of Governments has a new vis vision committee, I guess is what they're calling it where I'm meeting with other town councilors and select people from throughout Cumberland County to look at um, how we can be more effective in lobbying the state in particular on matters that are important to municipalities and school districts. Um, so it's a brand new thing that they're, that they're starting, so I'm very uh, happy to be involved with that. And there are some really great people on this committee, so stay tuned. Um, and part of it, they were really impressed to find out how much Scarborough does already to save money, like by sharing fire department stuff, sharing the school nutrition program, um, and just various things that we're already doing in Scarborough. So stay tuned. That's it. Thank you. Council vote. Um, nothing new, really. Just a reminder that the John Andrews 5K supporting the Eastern Trail Alliance is coming up, and I believe you can find a link for that on both the uh, O'Reilly's Cure Facebook page as well as the Eastern Trail Alliance Facebook page. That's Thank it. You. Councilor Rowan. Thank you. Um, Scarborough Housing Alliance was supposed to meet last Wednesday, uh, but given the activity here at Town Hall last Wednesday night, um, they were unable to meet. Um, they had discussed recently um, what to do about the three houses that are going to be displaced on um, with the new public safety building that's on Route 1. Um, and they decided uh, that, that they would rather see those houses go to use rather than place any kind of affordable covenants on them for someone to come, come get them. So they're not going to be asking uh, the council for any uh, restriction on how, how those houses are used. Um, they've also um, trying to figure out how to get more activity for the RFP that, that uh, we have released uh, back in February. Um, they are discussing possibly extending the deadline as well as actively soliciting um, to businesses and, and developers in town. Um, that's it for them. Historic Preservation Implementation Committee met last night. We had a very um, full schedule. Um, the first and foremost, um, the committee, the consensus that we came to around the Beechridge Schoolhouse that I mentioned at the last meeting um, was that uh, we decided that not to pursue uh, a reservation of funds in the fiscal year 19 budget, so I'm not going to be making a, any, any type of uh, motion at second reading uh, for an amendment to reserve any funds. Um, we're just not quite far and along in, enough along in the bidding process or with the uh, resolving the ownership issues. Um, so they're going to hold off on that. Um, uh, the other major item that I wanted to report out was around um, some corrections to the zoning ordinance with the um, historic property list. Um, a lot of research has been done um, by Jessica Holbrook, one of the committee members, about um, the original list and the reasons why properties were on the list. During that time, we discovered 
um, that we didn't have the property right in a couple of occasions, uh, and uh, we want to bring forward some corrections. Um, so we'll be passing that over to the process, which I believe goes to ordinance as well as the, the planning department. Um, and then they're also have been discussing making additions to the list and just decided to hold off on that for now. We'll just make the, uh, the corrections initially and then um, revisit the, the new additions. That's all I have. Good, thank you, Councilor Baber. Uh, thank you. Uh, the library had their regular meeting last week, but I missed that because of finance. Um, so I'll uh, provide an update at, the ne at their next meeting. Appointments is uh, normally scheduled for next Monday, but the committee has decided that given its current um, workload, uh, right now the HR director is still doing, conducting research based on our work uh, plan. Um, so there really is nothing pressing and we won't be having that meeting on Monday given our other meetings during the week. And I do want to mention that we still have five openings on the cable TV <laughs> um, television um, committee and would love to uh, find anyone that is interested. Thank you. Um, I attended a couple of finance committee meetings. Uh, we had uh, one member absent in each uh, each of the last two meetings. It was a good experience. <laughs> Forced me to get into the budget more, uh, which uh, was very helpful because uh, we go department by department, uh, and it gives us a very good sense of, of whether they are being efficient, whether they are holding the line, and it was impressive. We found some things, I think, that the Finance Committee is going to meet on the 10th of May to uh, make a recommendation for the 18th uh, for adjustments that uh, would seem appropriate, but uh, library was a very solid budget and uh, 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 it, was, uh, it was an excellent couple of meetings. I really enjoyed them. Uh, the Pest Management Committee uh, met. Uh, this is really an organics uh, orientation. The town has a policy that uh, uh, tries to advance a, an organics concept to uh, the way in which uh, our properties are maintained. Uh, I support that strongly. Uh, it's almost like a, uh, uh, a test lab. We're doing it with the municipal and school properties uh, and uh, with the hope that with the information and knowledge we gain over the years, this is the fifth or sixth year of its existence, that uh, with the soil testing, we'll be able to uh, make some recommendations to the community in the years years to come. Uh, Todd Souza, uh, the new community services director, is the staff person for pest management and is bringing some very strong organizational skills uh, to the program so that uh, I think the people who are members of the Pest Management Committee are excited about that because I think they're, uh, uh, they're appreciating the leadership that he's showing. So uh, it's, uh, it's been a nice advancement uh, in the meetings that I've been uh, attending. The Metro Regional Coalition is the seven communities that surround Portland, uh, and we, are, we meet every month, and we're continuing to work on developing a plan to better deal with affordable housing and homelessness. Uh, a, a chronic problem that uh, Portland bears an undue burden on, uh, not necessarily created by Scarborough, but by the region and by out of state, uh, uh, because it's a welcoming community. Uh, so uh, more on that as we go through the year and develop that. Uh, I think that's it on committees. Um, uh, town manager's report. Yes, thank you. Um, I've had the pleasure of being someplace that's 14 hours ahead in time, so uh, forgive me, I should be asleep right now. Um, but uh, jumping right back into things, certainly budget is a huge focus. We've got the next 10 days to do, uh, I think, a fair amount of work. Confident we'll get there. Um, and pleased to get some direction from finance last night in terms of uh, providing some information and seeing uh, you know, whether you can make some final adjustments to satisfy your, your goal uh, objectives. Uh, the public safety building process is continuing uh, at a fairly brisk pace. They're moving through the design development phase, so our uh, design is getting more and more exact. Uh, our quantities are being uh, perfected, if you will. We have some work to do in terms of uh, staying within budget, but again, it's still early. And uh, there was a public hearing last Wednesday evening at the public safety building. And my understanding from staff, uh, that was fairly productive. We had a number of residents come out, 
we did outreach that was actually twice as uh, tw twice as great as, as is required, if you will, and that did uh, turn out some folks that provided some very good feedback. Uh, the upshot, as I understand, is that we'll continue to have a road out to Sawyer Road, but it's likely to be one way for emergency vehicles only, and uh, that's likely going to save some money and certainly lessen impact on the on the park as well. So, we see that as a positive outcome and appreciate the input from the residents. Um, Can I ask a question about that? Yes. Um, would there still be parking along that road, or have we gotten that far with? We're looking at other alternatives to provide some parking opportunities for them. Okay, um, thank you. I probably reported on that prematurely. But uh, I, I, I wanted to say that uh, we did receive good input and we're taking that into consideration uh, as we speak with our design team. The Gorham Road project here, this is uh, Unitil is replacing the gas main from Route 1 down to Maple Avenue. You've probably all had the uh, occasion to go through that area. Uh, for what it is, from my perspective, it seems to be working out as well as could be expected. The inconvenience is kind of limited. They're being very thoughtful about school times uh, and kind of uh, those local traffic demands, uh, even so much as uh, they modified the schedule for trash pickup today. So they've been as accommodating as they could be. I do appreciate the community's patience as uh, we work through that project. Um, I'm pleased to report, and Tody could be a little more exact than me, but absentee voting seems very strong. We've been averaging 250 absentee ballots uh, daily. Today was 320. 320 today. So. Uh, I think uh, if you look at some of our recent history, uh, we almost always have more votes cast by absentee than on mm -hmm. election day. And so that suggests to me that we're going to be, uh, um, there will be adequate numbers to validate that, that election, uh, which I think is a, a point of uh, interest uh, of the council and the community. Um, and I also want to use the opportunity to congratulate and thank Tody and our staff for opening on Saturday. Yeah. That's just another example of uh, the dedication they have to making sure that there's every opportunity to vote. So thank you for that, Tody. Uh, and lastly, congratulations to the council and to the community. I had the occasion to watch uh, your public hearing of uh, April 25th. Uh, that's an incredibly trying experience for all folks involved. And uh, I really commend all of you in the community for being respectful and working through a very difficult evening. Um, and uh, you should all uh, credit yourself for um, a job well done given some tough circumstance. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor comments. Uh, let's start down at this end. Councillor David. Thank you. Uh, just a couple of items first is uh, um, also want to say thank you um, primarily to uh, Chair Chairman Donovan. Last week's special hearing um, I know took a lot of time and planning on his behalf to make sure that we were all respectful, that it was um, a truly um, human approach to this. And so I, I want to say thank you um, because I got a real um, good feel for that. And I appreciate the leadership that you took on that. Um, I also want to thank Tody, Colette, and Tracy for coming in, uh, working on Saturday and for uh, opening up the polls uh, special. Um, that's well above and beyond the call of duty. And I want to say thank you for your effort. Um, that's why you have that. Uh, Clerk of the Year award up on the wall because uh, you are so wonderful. Um, and then just last, last night we had a budget meeting and I wanted to address the issue around the um, kind of the analysis about the $750,000 conversation that's been going around. And I, I really hope that people understand that um, I support the analysis because I think we need to know what is the impact of a $750,000 adjustment, whether it's school or whether it's municipal. Um, it's, it's going to destroy programs. It's going to devalue um, some great services that we have, and I think that that story needs to be told as part of this conversation. So that's why I support at least receiving that information. Um, the superintendent, I thought, gave a very thoughtful explanation last night on what that would do to the schools. So I thought it was very clear. Um, I know the manager is working on his analysis, and I appreciate that. I just hope people understand that while that is good information for the conversation, that does not necessarily mean that I am in agreement that we need to move in that direction. Um, it's simply, I think, a responsible way of at least understanding um, what we're doing. So uh, with that, I'm looking forward to next week's uh, process um, and then the council's uh, eventual approval. Thank you. Councilor Rowe. Yeah, I, I usually let uh, comments kind of roll off my back and let them go, but um, something was said earlier uh, that I just take exception to. Um, the stuffed cheese and bacon donuts, <laughs> only donut, 
are delicious. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I refuse to sit silently when uh, they're denigrated. Thank you. Well said. How do you follow that? Yeah. Cows are both. I, you know, I, I've not tried it, so now I'm definitely going to try it. Try it. <laughs> um, I also wanted to thank uh, Chairman Donovan. I thought you did an excellent job last week under the toughest of circumstances that I've ever seen, certainly in this town. Uh, and I also want to just encourage voters as you go to vote, no matter which side of uh, things you're on and how you're thinking, I hope that, you know, I, I mentioned a, a bold law, and that law is that logic makes people think and emotion makes people act. And I hope that when you go to vote, you use your logic and, and what you believe uh, to be the right thing versus being angry because you didn't get the date that you wanted or those are not the right reasons to vote either way. And, and I hope people can separate that because I think I've heard uh, you know, a lot of anger still and I think we've got to start to move forward. So. Thank you. Councilor Kettering. Yeah, I'm going to put in a pitch for poor Councillor Baybine's cable TV. I mean, I know we kind of chuckle about it, but uh, if there are people out there in the community who are interested in uh, moving us forward as far as what we can and should be doing with our uh, TV capabilities, we'd love to have you uh, be part of that uh, committee. How many do you need? I'll five, take as many. Five. Five, five more. So please, please consider that. It'd be, it'd be a good experience, too. Um, tomorrow is the last day for so-called early voting. So unless you have an excuse uh, for not making it uh, to the polls on Tuesday, um, you need to vote tomorrow. Or, um, I mean, there will be ab so-called absentee voting on um Friday and Monday with special circumstances though. So you have to swear, and swear out something that you aren't gonna be here on Tuesday. So just be aware of that. Um, voting is Tuesday, May 8th. Um, I encourage everybody to turn out. I think this vote is gonna be, a, to me anyway, it feels like it's a reflection of the character of this community. Um, so, and I agree with uh, Councillor Foley that you need to use your logic and not your emotion uh, um, when casting your vote. Uh, and then the last thing for me is I agree with Councillor Babine that the more information out there on the budget look way, so that we can weigh, you know, what does it look like if we cut various things. I'm not advocating for cuts myself, but I think the more information that's out there, the better. Uh, so that everyone understands the impacts of, of any actions that we decide to take. So that's it for me. Thank you. Don Tate. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll just kind of echo the comments that we've already heard and, and thank Tody and her team and Colette and others. And from a little different perspective, yes, for coming in on Saturday, but I've talked to a lot of people in town and a lot of people have just remarked on the professionalism. They, they felt like they were respected. They felt like they came in. They got really great service. They got in and out. So I think that that's just thank you for doing that. It's tough times. There, are, there is a lot of emotion in the community, and your team's done a great job of kind of handling that. So thank, thank you. Thank you. That's it. Um, so uh, I do want to apologize again for my absence last week. Um, it wasn't by choice. Uh, unfortunately, I, I was out of town for business, um, and I could not reschedule it, but I did have the opportunity to watch a lot of it live. And uh, I would echo the comments of my, uh, my fellow counselors, um, not so much uh, congratulations to, to, to them. I know the effort that was put in by, by Chairman Donovan. Um, I, I did want to compliment the community on the um, decorum I, I felt was um, people were, were passionate, but I thought it was very well uh, controlled and I thought it was um, very well handled and a, very much a difficult situation, but um, it's the situation that we're in, so I, I, I appreciate the, the respect and the, and the process. Uh, I thought uh, everybody handled themselves uh, very admirably on, on both the public and uh, the board members uh, were very articulate in their responses as well. Uh, I'll echo the comments. Uh, I think the best thing that we can do to begin a healing process uh, is to first get out and make sure that uh, the vote is solid uh, and make sure that as many people as could humanly possible turn out to vote 
need to vote, and that helps reduce any questions or concerns about the validity of the vote. Um, a vote is really the only mechanism we have in town to certify and, uh, and, and quantify the will of the people. It's not petitions or emails or speaking at a podium or number of people in a room. It's a vote, so it's important. It's always important, maybe this time more so than others. Um, and um, finally, I, I think on the, the, I'll address some of the questions about finance. Um, I've, I've heard in the past, I mean, this is my sixth budget now, I've heard in the past that when you start talking about cuts, um, depending on your perspective, uh, you'll say it's either a scare tactic or it's not realistic. Uh, I think the intent, and I was the one that asked for the request for what those reductions would look like, both school and municipal, not because I, uh, again, endorse necessarily doing that, and not because I want to scare people, but I think we have an obligation as a council to have informed decision making. And I think it's really important for us to understand that every action that we take up here, whether it's voting for stickers on trash barrels or budgets, has a consequence. And there's an outcome that hopefully we've thought about and foreseen before we take action. So um, I'm looking forward to the information that, that comes out, not because I'm looking for gotcha moments or I, I want to carve any programs out, but I think it's important for us to understand as a community uh, the decisions that are made and the impacts that are going to that are going to come from those decisions. So um, I'll plug Councillor Baybine's uh, cable committee only because uh, I'm getting kind of tired of hearing that every, <laughs> every two weeks. Hopefully, someone will step up and maybe you can offer you know free. Direct TV or something in the process. Holy donuts <laughs> with cheesy bacon filling. I guess. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Holy donuts. There you go. Sign me up. There you go. Thank, thank you. Uh, I, I did want to comment a little bit about the budget because uh, uh, going into this year, I think all of us who who are close to the budget uh, and all seven members work hard to understand it uh, <coughs> knew this was going to be a tough year, uh, and so I. I'm thrilled to be sitting here excited about this budget. And the reason I'm excited uh, is kind of because our leadership at both the town level, the town manager, and at the school level with the superintendent and the uh, school board's finance committee have really presented lean budgets. Now, there, I'd love to be able to report that we have all the money in the world and we can expand programs and expand services. But the truth was, last year was a very difficult budget, and we had to fill a big hole as state revenue went down. And you can't spend what you don't have. Uh, and so I had some real trepidation about this. But the school started right off last year uh, and put a stop on any extra spending. Hundreds of thousands of dollars were saved as a result uh, just by running a lean efficient ship, and I was impressed by, by that order coming out of the superintendent's office right off the bat last year. That was uh, real leadership. Uh, I'm also excited because we have not only two of the best year-over-year -year cost increases, because I always look at, are we, are we spending a lot more money than we did the year before? And I sort of measure it as, Salary increases in the 2% range, health insurance driving you crazy, uh, some other cost of living adjustments. It's hard to stay below a 3% cost year over year cost increase. Well, both of these budgets are in the range of 3%, both school and the town uh, for operating costs. The town's looks a little bit odd because we have $760,000 worth of bond expenses this year that were approved, largely approved. But uh, uh, when you just look at operating costs, those aren't operating costs, uh, the town budget's in the low threes, and the school's in the high twos. And that's, and that's, that's quite an accomplishment. I also am very pleased that the town council saw fit to advance a partial revaluation which is going to add a dramatic amount of assessed value to the town's tax rolls, 
when our tax rate is set in August and the tax bills go out in September. We will be talking next two weeks from now on May 18th, uh, May 16th, about what the tax rate impact is. The town manager is working closely with the town assessor uh, on what a cautious and conservative estimate would be about what that looks like. But even the most cautious and conservative estimate is going to bring that figure down so that the community is going to be very pleased with the outcome. Uh, I would not have made a commitment to being under 3% without having a full appreciation of what uh, that effect will have. And it will have a very, very positive effect on the outcome of this budget. So uh, with that, uh, I do want to also urge people to vote on May 8th. Uh, and I want you to vote with a full appreciation of what people are trying to do with this uh, with this election. Learn what's going on and then vote with your head. Uh, I think that, uh, uh, but please do the work in the community so that you know what's going on and cast your vote. Uh, lastly, I want to be able to thank <coughs> Larissa Crockett, who was the assistant town manager and who stood in very ably. Uh, it was a difficult week for all of us. Uh, and I know that uh, Tom Hall uh, uh, felt he had left things in good hands with our assistant town manager, and I want to very much express my appreciation. Uh, and, uh, and I certainly uh, uh, appreciated the courtesy and the professionalism that all of the speakers exhibited uh, uh, in, uh, in the public hearing we had last week. I was uh, very impressed by all of you. With that, I'll ask for an adjournment. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor. Thank you.